As I mentioned in the last couple of videos that jihad mainly means the religious duty of fighting and spreading the Islamic ideology across the globe. And it is stated in the Quran several times like Jihad, holy fighting in Allah's cause against the disbelievers is ordained for you Muslims, though you dislike it. So uh, even though you might not really like waging holy war so much for the sake of religion, but it is still a divine order that you have to follow. And Muhammad used in the Quran the method of fear and rewards to encourage Muslims to fight or do jihad and to spend their money on fighting. For example, it says, O oh, you who believed, when you meet those who disbelieve advancing for battle, do not turn to them your backs in fight. And whoever turns his back to them has certainly returned with anger upon him from Allah, and his refuge is hell. But who exactly should Islamists fight? Here is the answer. Then when the sacred months have passed, then kill the mushrikun wherever you find them, and capture them, and besiege them, and prepare for them each and every ambush. But if they repent and perform the prayers and pay the cat, then leave their way free. Verily, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Indeed he is! So let's explain this piece by piece. So the sacred months are the 1st and 7th, 11th and the 12th months of the Islamic calendar that Muslims should not fight so they can take a break from sacred killing and go back to fight for the rest of the year. And the word mushrikun means that the ones who falsely associate anything else with God. So Muslims should only follow Sharia laws. If someone, for example, wants to build a state governed by any man-made laws, then he is considered according to the words of the Quran to be a mushrik, even if he himself considers himself to be a Muslim. I think now the picture is starting to get clear why ISIS is, for example, killing everyone, including Muslims. Okay, so <clears throat> let's ask the question again. So who should Islamists fight against? Everyone. Everyone who is not a Muslim or even Muslims who don't want to follow Sharia laws. I will give you five seconds to let this horrific fact sink in. But, but wait, 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 this is not the whole picture. Maybe I am exaggerating. Maybe there is something I did understand. What about the Sunnah? What about Muhammad? What did he actually do to spread Islam? So the first 13 years that Muhammad was preaching for the Islamic religion, he was advocating for peace, just like a Buddhist monk, peace and tolerance. He never actually encouraged Muslims to fight anyone who was opposing them. But that was at the beginning before he succeeded in establishing his Islamic state. But after that, things had changed. He became a head of a state with an army under his command. During that, he fought 28 battles. Of course, I'm not gonna mention all of them, but I will mention a few examples briefly. So the first example is the invasion of Bani Quraiva, where Muhammad ordered the beheading of at least 700 Jewish men and taking their possessions and women as slaves. And the second example is the Battle of Khaybar, where he besieged a Jewish tribe and forced them to pay half of what they produce. Oh, and by the way, he raped one of the women after killing her husband. I didn't go through the details of the examples that I have presented, but you can look them up if you want. You can find what I have said on Wikipedia, for example. It's not very hard to find. But the question is, how Muslims have these horrible atrocities and many others in their history and still believe that Islam is the religion of peace and Muhammad was a merciful person? First of all, although these stories are there in the Islamic history, but they are rarely cited. And when I was reading the verses in the Quran that order Muslims to do jihad and fight the infidels, my mind always do the same trick. I would say, of course, that is not what it meant. It must have meant something else that I did understand, or maybe I don't understand the full context. So I can just go on with my life and continue believing that my religion is a peaceful religion. And of course, if any Muslim took any of the violent words in the Quran literally, he will definitely become a radical. And to conclude, Islamism is not a new thing. 
It is something that was born with Islam. Well, to be more specific, Islamism is Islam. So does that mean that all Muslims are Islamists? The reason why this question is very important because it shows you how many Muslims who are actually living their lives normally as anyone else and can assimilate themselves with liberal societies and liberal values and how many Muslims you should be afraid of who are radicals who can actually commit terrorism or at least cannot accept liberal values. But if you want to get an answer for this question then we have to look for the surveys that had the same question and there are several surveys out there but I will mention one which is in my opinion the most reliable which was the survey that was published in uh, November 2015 by the Pew Research Center which have this question How many Muslims in these countries hold positive views towards ISIS? The survey shows that Jordan has 4%, Indonesia 18%, Turkey 19%, Nigeria 20%, Malaysia 29%, Pakistan 62%. This survey didn't include Egypt, but for me, someone who lived there for most of my life, I would say that the percentage might be low for people who openly support ISIS, which makes sense. ISIS is a group deemed by the whole world as terrorist group, so of course no one wants to relate himself directly to it. However, the Pew Research Center published before that a study in 2012 showing that 86% of Egyptian Muslims advocate for ideas like the killing of homosexuals or killing of apostates and other crimes that are done by ISIS and 74% of Egyptian Muslims are in favor of applying Sharia laws And again, how does the Muslim mind do that? To convince you that the killing of homosexuals and killing of apostates is a good thing, but when the exact same acts are done by ISIS, then it's a bad thing. By believing in conspiracy theories. And I'll give you an example. When Al-Qaeda knocked down the two towers, as a Muslim, I was believing solidly that the US was the one responsible for that. Of course America did it, so they can have the excuse to invade Arabic and Muslim countries as much as they want. Why would ever Muslims do that? Islam is the religion of peace. And now Muslims believe in the same exact thing when it comes to ISIS. Of course ISIS is an organization that was founded by the CIA and Israel. You have no idea how these conspiracy theories are so common in Egypt. To conclude, that means that most of Muslims are just normal people who want to get by in their normal lives, who want to go to school, who want to eat sandwiches. Or how about the more than a billion those, people who are aren't Muslims fanatical, too. who don't punch well, women, who just want to go to school, okay, wait a second, 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 but still some of them after eating the sandwich, they want to bomb themselves for the sake of Islam. Honestly, I assume that most Muslims are harmless people. Yeah, they have the desire to convert the whole world to Islam, but they don't do anything about it. But still minority of them want to kill and rape and wreak havoc across the globe in the name of Islam driven by what's actually written there and stated by the Quran and the Sunnah. So they would find safe haven in joining radical groups like ISIS. Just imagine some concentric circles here. You have at the center, you have jihadists. These are people who wake up in the morning wanting to kill apostates, wanting to, to die trying. They believe in paradise. They, Horrible they, they bad believe people in, that, yeah. in, in martyrdom. Outside of them, we have Islamists. These are, these are people who are just as convinced of martyrdom and paradise and, and wanting to, to foist their religion on the rest of humanity, but they want to work within the system. They're not going to blow themselves up on a bus. They want to change governments. They want to use democracy against itself. That, it, that, those two circles arguably are 20% of the Muslim world. Islamism as a topic is very important to understand if you want to know about the radical Islamic mentality and where does it come from. And in this whole argument, in this series of videos, I only covered a fraction of it. But I intend to cover more of it 
in this channel. And as always, I'm waiting for your comments and your feedback, and subscribe if you want more of my content. Thank you for watching. Peace.